is there a danger that we spend so much time worrying about immigration and migration that we forget that that's always been part of our history? Of course, it's been part of our history. Um, I'm a first generation immigrant. Calvin is second generation. And you perhaps um, originate a little earlier. Oh, my, my, my uh, origin, is... so three generations ago, my origins were somewhere over in the gulags of Russia, uh, somewhere, you know, to Eastern Europe and indeed elsewhere. So, so we've got first, second and third generation then. So we've got first, second and third generation. This is what happens. And people now, uh, I've become so assimilated, people assume that I'm posh. People assume uh, that. They assume that. Why do they assume that, James? Well, they is assume. Is it because of the flying around on private jets or the posh accent? Why would they assume that? If if I was flying around on private jets, I've done it once at the cost of our British Broadcasting Corporation. I, no, I've done it more than once actually. Uh, but if, always, if, always at if, the expense if, of others. We got distracted. Up. It, we've got distracted, and if, you, if they say that about you, imagine what they say about me. Um, look, this is not about uh, attacking immigrants. Migration is a good thing. Of course, we're going to have migration. What we are about, what we have been looking at, and this is the latest of a, a series of papers we're, we're producing, is how we've got here um, as much as what is happening now and what we're heading towards. Uh, in 1980 to 2000, immigration was at the rate of about 80,000 net a year. Since then, it's been 300,000. The uh, number of foreign-born people in this country has doubled in barely 20 years. And the ethnic minority section of the population has more than doubled. It's gone from 6 million to 13.5 million in 20 years. And that is what the issue is. And we can see that. When we look at hospitals, when, uh, when you, when you, being when, born. You, when you say that's what the issue is, does that mean that that's what we should note because our society needs to change to reflect it? Or does that mean that we need to do something about it because you don't agree with it? I mean, what, what, what do you mean? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> what I mean, I will tell you what I mean. I, uh, my starting point is something that Louise Casey, Baroness Casey, uh, uh, highlighted in her report five years ago now that as the diversity of the nation increased people become people from minority groups become more dispersed around the country and in some cases more concentrated and as that happens they become more segregated the whole point is that if we want those who arrive in this country to become integrated and part of our society as you and I and Calvin have, what we need to do is reduce immigration significantly if we're not going to head towards problems in the future. Absolutely. That's what the issue is. So it's about controlled immigration, isn't it? And we, you know, we've had a Tory Absolutely. government for, what, 11 years now? And they've used the EU as an excuse for most of that. We're no longer in the EU. We can control our own borders and the floodgates are still open. We're seeing the ridiculous situation that's happening down at the Channel. Um, and we're not putting into, into place measures to prevent that. But my issue and my question to you is what's going to happen to British values and British culture as we leave the floodgates open and allow people to continually continue to move here, continue to have children here without integrating into our society and taking on board our values and our culture as the primary set of values and culture. Well, that, that's a, 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 an exceptionally good question, Calvin, if I may say so, because that is exactly what the issue is, that the more that people arrive in the sort of numbers on the scale and the speed with which they get get here the numbers increasing in schools which are as we see in places around the country becoming segregated then frankly integration is not taking place and that is where the tensions are going to arise because the rate of immigration and what is happening at the moment makes integration almost all but impossible when you talk about integration uh, one of the things that I think uh, seems to be so important is, on one hand, you want to reflect the fact that people will want to keep their customs and their history and 
um, and uh, interests, if you like, which I would fully respect. And as somebody who grew up as uh, North London Jewish, I, you know, you can you can do that very happily alongside taking along the the cultural and the um, sort of heritage aspects of the nation with which you're living. That seems to have been lost in translation somewhere that I would have thought that if you're going to come and live in this country, you really need to learn to speak the language. You really need to understand yes. the laws of the land. You need to. In, and, and I don't want to eradicate anybody's own language. I don't want to eradicate anybody's own, um, you know, history and culture. And I think that they could sit suitably side by side. Is sometimes. that something sometimes? Well, I, I think always they can. Some if if people want to sit side by side like which. Some, some values do not match. So, for example, we have a big problem up in uh, Batley and Spen, where some people would say that you're not allowed to teach certain issues in this country, and our values say that we're allowed to teach everything, and that's how we debate, that's how we learn. So, Alp, how do we, how do we deal with these problems that particularly, um, you know, Calvin has highlighted, which is, you know, if we want to talk about same-sex relationships or indeed elsewhere uh, within, within our society, because we say that's what society must do, and there are people who, who decide that that's not the case, those are exactly the sort of tensions that I guess we're going to have to deal with. Uh, no, it's where we insist that these issues are discussed. And um, frankly, um, you, you you say about people coming here and integrating and uh, our accepting where they're from and what their beliefs. This is not about faith. This is not about telling people what they should believe in. But they are coming to a Judeo-Christian founded country but then um, but then a sec and, but hang on a second but you are telling them about their faith because if their faith says uh that um arranged marriages is what we do if their faith says uh that's you, culture not faith you, though yeah well yeah but if your faith says you should marry somebody of a similar faith to yourself if somebody says um that same-sex relationships are not acceptable within your religion uh, and so on and so forth then you are dealing with matters of faith in addition to matters of culture no, I, I, I'm not sure I agree with that, James. Um, th there is, uh, firstly, uh, arranged marriages are not part of any religion. That is not, it may be, as Calvin says, what is done culturally. I, I came from a society born in a little village uh, in the 40s in Cyprus, where, frankly, if you married outside the village, you were considered to have done something really quite heinous. Um, I, I married a Welsh girl eventually oh. here. And, uh, <laughs> well, every, um, every kind well, of abomination well, is, is heading your way out. <laughs> That's clearly the case. <laughs> but my point is that this is not about religion. It is not about uh, Islam, Christianity, and it's not just Islam. Um, it, there's a, a variety of religions where uh, marrying outside the religion is is frowned upon. However, um, I think it's wrong to deny any child, any young person who comes to this country, deny them the opportunity of marrying who they want rather than being told who they must marry. They may choose to do it in the way that um, their parents and their community wishes them to do it. However, um, the fact is that what must not happen is for them to be denied the freedom to make that choice. And that is with immigration at the sort of rate that we've been having, what we've had is communities growing really to the extent where they can subsist within themselves right. they do not need right. to look beyond it i think we're getting we're getting lost in the minutia of this help but i think we agree that it, the case of is um it's all about inclusion we're all about welcoming people into this country uh, the numbers that we need to meet the, the needs and requirements that we have as long as they choose to take on board our, our values and our culture but also they looking, can, they can looking, keep their own if it's not in tangent you know if it's not in conflict with ours but they need to take on board but also looking, values. looking at the overall numbers which i think Alp, is the uh, message that you've given to us we must leave it there for time reasons alone uh, great to chat to you. That's Alp Mehmet, Chairman of Migration Watch.